I'm a writer-director. I've made one feature film called Mr. Sadman. I always liked the idea of making movies and telling stories, so I decided to apply to film schools. But I missed all the deadlines except for one, San Francisco State, so I applied and they took me. So I went. So why'd you go to film school? Because they took me. That was really nice of them. Hey, I'm Patrick Epino. Um, I'm a writer, director, uh, new media guy I'm from uh, San Francisco, California. I was born and raised in the Bay Area, and my folks are from uh, like Quezon City and stuff like that. No, like uh, I always just like the idea of telling stories and stuff, and like movies were the things that always kind of got you going and. Uh, you know, you wanted to, you know, you always had like ideas and thoughts and opinions and questions that you wanted answered and without having any answers, you just kind of want to throw them out there. So uh, I was studying art. I thought I was going to do that. And then I actually thought of studying film, but the University of Chicago didn't have a production program. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, okay, I'll go to Columbia College and kind of do this interdisciplinary, like, you know, like dual campus thing. But I was kind of too much of a slacker to, to get that done, <laughs> nice, and uh, nice. so it didn't happen. <laughs> and um, so I ended up studying sociology, yeah. And uh, uh, which which was which was cool, you know. Like I think Chicago, uh, the USC, uh, they started that whole kind of discipline, so it was really like old schooly and um, you know kind of interesting. And that actually um, informs, or that informed a lot of the way I kind of look at film and, and storytelling, you know, like. Everybody comes up with ideas in different ways. Um, I think that I kind of look at certain social situations and build out from there. You know, yeah. Um, like kind of, I, I kind of like social critique in a way. Uh, uh, maybe you know, a lot of times it's like satirical, and um, you know, I see issues I see things and I have questions and I like to ask those questions and not necessarily have the answers to them but um, just kind of you know put them out there and stuff there was this movement from being like this major slacker in college to um, kind of having some kind of uh, drive and motivation in, uh, in uh, my MFA program um, but, you know, like in, uh, you know, I made a couple, a few short films, um, one called Spunk, which is kind of a, a satire of these, like, identity type uh, uh, films. You know, I'd seen a lot of, like, these kind of documentaries that are about, um, you know, being, like, uh, the odd man out. And uh, I, I decided just, it was just a short little thing to play with that idea and kind of, like, tongue and cheekishly like poke fun at it and then I made a short film called Void which um, was kind of a uh, this again this kind of like just critique of um, the self-help uh, movement or this like the way that uh, people try to fill their lives with stuff and things and um, it, it's about a guy who uh, is walking around or he you know he's he's trying to uh he's trying to find a little bit of happiness and he doesn't know how to do it so he listens to like a self-help uh uh audio book or something and he decides that the way to fill it up is to um fill it up with stuff and color and things and just a lot of like purchasing and consumerist type stuff and uh and then like the whole idea is that that's kind of the way it's uh, this alienation this the the way a lot of people, um, I think, are in the world today. Uh, I made a, a feature film called Mr. Sadman, uh, which was about a 1990 uh, Saddam Hussein double uh, who loses his job and moves to Los Angeles to start his life over. And that actually takes a lot of the similar themes from Void about, a, um, you know, the, the question that I'm asking in that film is, uh, well, you know, the thing that really matters the most to you, like what really defines you. Um, and for this guy, it was being a Saddam Hussein double. Uh, when that is taken away, and uh, what are you kind of left to hold on to? And he just, you know, in, in today's world, he just 
kind of goes through these different iterations trying to find like a sense of meaning and a sense of like belonging and a sense of place. Um, and, uh, you know, it becomes like this, this, this farce, this satire about, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the world that I kind of see, the world that I kind of know. Mm-hmm. And in a lot of ways, like a lot of these things are, uh, uh, you know, everybody writes stories that are about like their own experiences. And then as you kind of write more and more, um, it becomes a little bit more like universal. But for me, like Mr. Sadman is, is kind of like, you know, uh, uh, the way that, um, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a, what, what I've seen in folks and what I've kind of lived through in a weird way, taken to a very, like, um, uh, taken to a huge extreme. You know? Met Steve, I've only known Steve for about a year and a half. Um, we met at, a uh, the Asian American Film Festival in LA, like in 2010. I met Steve and we, we had like obviously the same, like similar interests. We uh, were both filmmakers and we're both Filipino, although I always like doubt that he really is. <laughs> Maybe like in, in early summer, we met up and um, I had this one idea and then he had an idea and they were like, hey, let's just combine this idea, you know? And then, um, and then we just kind of figured something out, you know, took what we knew. Uh, and created the National Film Society, which, you know, is like, uh, so technically, you know, from, we have a YouTube channel, but we're also like working on other things and just trying to build out, uh, you know, uh, like this, you know, this production company and create new work and work with other people and just really try out some new ideas that, uh, that we have. And then, um, you know, show friends work, uh, show work that we like, and, uh, you know, in the end, just try to make good stuff. I, I like change, personally, and I like things getting, like, uh, shaken up. I think, like, uh, the whole idea of, like, conflict, obviously, with, like, uh, the traditional film and, like, new film and new media and stuff like that. I think all that stuff is really exciting. I think it's a fun time to kind of be around um, because we all you kind of, you know, like at a certain chunk of people, like all kind of grew up with the same like filmmaker, like a mythology that you make a film and then blah, blah, blah. And, and it gets screened and, you know, you get to make a bunch of other movies. And that really didn't, that barely existed before. And now it really doesn't exist. But there's just a lot of ways to kind of create good stuff. These kids that are growing up with like with YouTube already yeah. um, as a thing that existed when they were like socializing into the media world, it's 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 like one of their main things, you know. So um, absolutely, I think it's uh, a lot of you know democracy in it. Um, you know, know know what's out there, and then like just kind of get get a grasp of all the tools. There's so many things, and so many ways you can do things, um, and I think like younger folks have a better grasp of that than people who came up um, like uh, 10, 20 years ago in terms of film. Because I think what you know what I've run into is that a lot of filmmakers are not only hesitant, but they're just somewhat like kind of detached from technology, mm-hmm. and some of them like embrace that defiantly, um, which, which is fine. But like sometimes that doesn't, that, you know, if you don't have like all these other people pushing stuff for you, then it's, it can be a negative. So I think, you know, being, being aware and, and, uh, of all the, of all the tools at your disposal, not to, uh, anything from production to post to, um, to distribution and, you know, like, you know, there's, we all live in screens, you know what I mean, of different sizes and just know how to, um, use those as a, uh, as a, to your advantage, you know, as tools. So, and there's always like, you know, and, and there's always somebody to listen to, you know, there's, there's a ton of stories to tell out there, you know, and just know the ones that have been told and tell new ones or tell the old ones better. I worked <laughs> three times. So I didn't do anything. Um, well, Steve and I shot a couple of videos, um, and then uh, 
uh, when I was in LA, I went to a couple of events and, and, you know, to be honest, it's like, um, if I, you know, with limited time right now, uh, the only thing I can do is just be like a conduit to like kind of see something and like tell other people about it, you know, and just try to like spread words of, uh, uh spread the word of, of things that are going on. Um, whether it's my friends or somebody else doing something, I think, um, just cause they do stuff and you know, that, 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 um, is informative, cultural and, and all around, like just kind of gets into the, uh, the vibe of, of, of like, you know, knowing, knowing history, knowing like, uh, you know, kind of just like, uh, reflecting on things. Um, I think for me, it's just, uh, I work like 14 hours a day, so there wasn't really much I could do except kick it with my folks when I'm in, uh, when I'm up in the Bay area. So, Uh, what did you do? Like on the, growing up on the West Coast, like you, it was it's super. I mean, going to Chicago when I was eighteen was like it was kind of culture shock. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Especially the University of Chicago. Um, that that school holds a very very special place in my heart. But um, it was you know it's it's known for being kind of quirky and odd. At least I think it is. And um, it was just kind of different being out in the Midwest. And uh, I think. Um, I think, like, growing up in in the Bay Area, it was, like, you know, it was a lot more fluid, you know? Um, and in Chicago, like, it was just a little bit more, uh, I mean, it's, you know, racially stratified, which you'll say, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it was just kind of, it was different. It took a little while to get used to. But then, you know, like anything, it's just, like, you know, you roll with it, and uh, I love Chicago. You know, for better or for worse, like the Filipino culture is very copycat. It's very you know remnants of uh, being like uh, occupied and um, colonized and stuff. And you know, it's just like this this kind of this mix up of like different um, islands and whatever. And so you know, there's so much breadth, so much depth to that culture that like. Um, that kind of extends to to the uh, to everything else that that we do. So it's not like one particular kind of thing. You know what I mean? It's like there's, and, and I think there's so much like blending and so much like flexibility in that storytelling that um, you know people need to graduate past all the all the old stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and 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 I think it's I think it's uh, I think it's true for, um, you know, Asian American film in, in general, you know, and I do think like new media stuff, like, you know, little videos and kind of like offline stuff, it's, it creates the space for, um, to kind of fill in those, those gaps, you know, of, of, of representation and, and, um, and just, you know, like, you know, filling out the, the narrative. Cause I mean, Anything with pork. <laughs> if I see a lechon, that's all mine. I'm housing that thing. Yeah. Uh, and synagogue, that's probably, those are probably my favorites. Uh, Lumpia Shanghai style. Yeah, just working on the National Film Society, um, which is fun. And we're looking to, like, you know, kind of slowly but surely kind of do different stuff and grow a little bit and just work with other folks um, down the road. I'm hoping next year I get to shoot another feature um, and, uh, you know, keep my fingers crossed and um, sending out my first feature, Mr. Sadman, to um, a distributor. You know, you check us out at the, on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash National Film Society, and you can check me out at uh, patchfupino.com or, you know, Follow me on Twitter, which is just Patrick Pino. So.